I mean, uh, when we talk about the actual art of refereeing, right? Um, I think we hear in WWE sometimes, and you know, this, this isn't just uh, compartmentalized to refereeing in general jobs. Vince McMahon being in the ear. Um, how difficult is it and how much is he really, I, I don't mean how difficult is refereeing, I mean how difficult is it to ju juggle what's being fed to you? Uh, is Vince McMahon the one who feeds that or is there other guys? No, it's not Vince. It's it's usually Vince going to Billy Kidman at the gorilla position and then you have a producer sitting next to Billy Kidman. Because Billy's like the time guy, right? Billy's the time guy. He takes care of the times, the breaks, commercial breaks, and he takes care of everything. He, he takes care of all the messages coming in from Vince. And then you have the producer sitting next to Billy. So the there those two guys, producer and Billy, is in your ear constantly. So I mean, you know, and you're giving you cues and you're giving you messages and this and that. So I mean it, it gets tough because you know, the most important part is going off the air during a commercial break and definitely going off the air, you know, for a live, live TV shot, you know, going off the air at eleven o'clock on Raw. When you're going off the air at 10 o'clock, you got to hit those time cues. Yeah. Those are most stressful. And so like in terms of your interactions with Vince full stop, like, and I'm just assuming this because obviously you've been there for so long and being a senior guy. Um, right. Is that more of a case of like after a match or something, he'll be like, Hey, or maybe before a match, like, is, is there much of a direct line? Yeah. I mean, there's a direct line is before, if he wants something certainly done in that match, you know, before you go out to that match and, you stop by and see Vince and you say, is there anything else you would like out of this? Or on the way back, you know, if he, he gives you the thumbs up, comes over and shakes your hand, that's it's a lot of respect right there. You know, it's a lot of it's a lot of appreciation coming from a guy like him, like Vince McMahon himself. Yeah. On the strength of that, I got like a two-prong question. Now, I remember Timmy White, right? Do you remember that bad right. bump he took in the hell in the cell, right? Yes, bad. Yes, yes. Must, must up his yes. shoulder. Um, Real bad. That's what kind of ended his career, you know. Yeah. He's the one who called me too, and I had the rotator cuff surgery and all that, because he was kind of concerned. Was like, was it? Is this the end of your career, or is it? You know, he goes, I, you know, because knowing what Timmy went through, because he never really made a comeback after that. His shoulder yeah. kept popping out, but so Timmy called me and he was very concerned. I said, No, nah, Tim, I should be all right. I should be good to go, man. I'm ready, getting ready for WrestleMania. Yeah. And then, Ooh, April 15th came. <laughs> Not only was tax day here in the United States, it was my, my you know, <laughs> see you later, termination. <laughs> what a goddamn day. Uh, yeah, that's right. Got to pay the government and I got to get <laughs> my job. And there's a pandemic going on. I'm like, what? <laughs> Give me a break. Oh uh, God, okay. <laughs> but I asked that because like, you know, I, I presume when there's bumps or things like that to be taken, that's a, a special thing that you're spoken to about. And obviously, you know, yes. uh, maybe, you know, just clue me up and who comes to you with that. And also in light of what happened to Timmy, is there a different, is there a different way you look at it now? And sometimes you have to go, oh, I don't know. Oh yeah. I used to like, you know, I'm over the years and stuff and that comes with experience and the boys would have respect, you know, for, for what I have my input on a match. But a producer would come up with some bumps or the talent would too. And it's just a way to protect something and keep me down for a little bit while they do something. Or And, you know, it's like uh, there's certain kind of bumps. There's a bump that's going to knock you out for the match completely and somebody else comes in. Or there's a certain bump that's just going to knock you out for a couple seconds to, so you don't see nothing. Mm -hmm. There's certain different ways of bumping a referee depending how much time you need to get whatever you're trying to get in there in the match. What's the craziest one you've been asked to do or, or have you been quite lucky? Uh, the craziest one was one time Taker pressed, pressed me over the top rope years ago. The <laughs> pay-per-view and Sean was there. And uh, Sean turned around and he was supposed to catch me, Sean. <laughs> and then Taker <laughs> threw me over the top. Sean turned, looked and turned back away. Boom. I just crashed and burned. <laughs> That's the That's thing. Bad. Undertaker, yeah. Undertaker, you're high in the air. High up there, high up there. I was like, I was like, I didn't think Sean was gonna catch me, man. <laughs> <laughs> I knew it. I knew it. But then yeah, we had this Shane McMahon bump I used to love all the time in Chicago. And uh I come running down the ring during a match, and he just he's hiding behind the um, the barricades, and he just takes me out and just a shoulder tackle and puts me like five or six feet in the air, which is pretty <laughs> cool. Yeah.